Perfect. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Coach Youth Hoops podcast. We have a special guest today, Rob Brost. And the subject is lock, or I'm sorry, force left, force left, which I also want to get into, right? The lock left defense. Yep. Yeah. I've had those questions come up. So we'll dive into uh, force left defense. But before we get started, coaches, if you're uh, halfway through your season or just starting out and kind of confused about what's going on in basketball practice, head over to basketballpracticeplans.com. Uh, we have a full season of practices ready, print and ready to go for you. Um, select your grade and out the door. One other thing that uh, we just started doing is practice plans reviews. So um, if you're kind of like, eh, I don't know what if this is the right practice, if I'm doing it right, maybe the skills you're teaching aren't translating to the games. Go over to, uh, again, go over to ba basketball practice plans. Doc, uh, sorry, basketballpracticeplans.com. You'll see a link at the bottom of the website where it says uh, practice plan reviews. Um, click that, upload your practice plan or a video, and we'll take a look at that. And don't forget about our uh, every Wednesday, we have coaches clinics uh, at basketballpracticeplans.com. Just go to basketballpracticeplans.com forward slash coaches clinics and you will find them all there all right we got the commercials out of the way we're gonna dive into um the the uh, force left defense you know what rob i'm gonna have you introduce yourself you have a long history in you've been coaching a long time a lot yeah. of different levels um so why don't you go ahead and dive in tell us tell us about yourself yeah, well, uh, first off, thanks for having me. Um, I'm happy to be here. I think it's going to be a great night, and I appreciate uh, everybody uh, for for listening. Um, this is my 16th year at Bolingbrook High School. We play in Illinois' biggest class. We've made three of the last six Final Fours. Um, we have won 30 games, four of the last – five years take out COVID, of course. Yeah. Um, we are one of the most successful programs uh, in, in the state of Illinois. Um, I do extensive work for USA Basketball as well with their um, 17U and 16U national squads. Um, I've been a court coach. I don't know exactly how many times I see between nine and 12 times. I'm wow. kind of losing, losing yeah. count. Um, I went to Italy uh, this summer and worked at uh, and uh, spoke at several uh, camps in Italy uh, this summer, which was a great experience. Um, prior to my time at uh, Bolingbrook High School, I was the manager of basketball operations at the Chicago Bulls Training Academy. We were in charge of running all youth programming for the Chicago Bulls. Uh, we had our own facility, um, and so I help jumpstart that uh, facility and get that going. I was much younger then, um, <laughs> but, uh, and then what prior, year was that? were you there when Michael was there? I wasn't. We, I, 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 they opened it um, in 2001. We opened it, I guess I was on yep. the ground level with them uh, opening that facility in 2001. So just, about the time when we had the worst Bulls teams in the history of the Bulls. So, but anyways, that's uh, neither here nor there at this point. Um, prior to that, I was a head coach at the junior college level um, for three season at, at McHenry County College, uh, which is about 45 miles northwest of Chicago. And prior to that, I was the head freshman coach at my alma mater where I went to high school in Cedar Falls, Iowa. That's where I grew up. Um, so, you know, I've been around maybe longer than I, I want to be around. No, th that, that didn't come out right. But uh, so uh, I have extensive experience. I've spoke at uh, several state association clinics uh, across the country. I've spoken at PGC clinics across the country. Um, so, you know, I, I hopefully uh, your listeners gain some value from today. Uh, we call our force left man left. Um, we, uh, have been running it here at Bolingbrook High School as our primary man defense for about five seasons now, maybe six. Um, and so, you know, we we were one of the first high schools uh, to really commit to doing it. And so we've tweaked it and 
you know, and we'll get into some of this, how it kind of evolved into what it is now. And, you know, I've made uh, through breakthrough basketball. I have a man left video out. Um, not that I'm here to sell videos, but I mean, you'll probably get a little bit better overall explanation and idea of it uh, from the video at breakthrough basketball. And really we run the defense. I know I might be jumping the gun a little bit. We yeah. run this defense because of how we want to play offense. We yeah. want other teams to um, have to do something with the basketball. And, you know, we play really, really fast um, offensively. And so in order to do that, we need to speed teams up on their offensive end when we're on defense. And so the man left really does that for us. And it really uh, helps us uh, offensively uh, more than anything to get us into the tempo that we want to play. A lot of teams um, prior to running man left were really holding the ball on us, screening us seven, eight, nine, ten times. And then eventually, obviously, like every defense, we're going to break down and um, and so that was the recipe to beat Bowling Brook. And you don't um, have a shot clock, right? In we don't have a shot clock. Yeah. So um, we're knock on wood. We're hoping next year for the big class uh, that that uh, that finally comes through. And it looks like it is um, several of our tournaments and big shootout games. We're playing with the shot clock this yeah. season. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. So, uh, you know, that's kind Does that of change anything for you guys. So you think with, a... I don't think so. I, I think it actually hurts us more than it, than it helps us because teams now can just get all five back as soon as they shoot. And it's going to force us to do some things, um, offensively that maybe we didn't have to do before, mm -hmm. but the, the corollary to that is, um, you know, the other team's going to have, they, they can't hold it. Uh, but typically we would like our opponents to shoot the ball within the first 10 to 12 seconds that they have it anyways. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully it, it doesn't affect us that much, but I think it adds obviously a little level of coaching acumen uh, with the whole thing. So I think coaches are going to be able to strategize more and, and do more. And um, you know, it, it's the, the people that are, not accustomed to it but use it correctly i think it's going to be to their advantage so yeah well let's start let why don't we do this let's start from a high level of the the man left defense uh you know i i implemented it uh for my high school girls program uh you know we're two weeks into it and i have to say uh you know i told you before we got on here we had our first scrimmage and i was actually quite pleased with the progress Again, it doesn't look as good as yours yet, but we'll get there. Well, I don't um, know. We, we sometimes sometimes the Raiders don't do it very well. <laughs> but so maybe just give us a high level overview of the man left. I mean, it, it's yep. I mean, it could be pretty obvious, but yep. uh, and then I think you in the video on the breakthrough video, you had talked about implementing it at your at the youth level. Yeah, um, and it's, I'm assuming you have a feeder program into your high school that you're helping yep. manage. And, yes, um, and so yeah, you know, I think you can implement the man left at any level, and I think it will be successful at any level. I have friends that are in the NBA; they force weak hand a lot, and they call it weak hand, but it's essentially what it is: is man left. Mm -hmm. And so you see a lot of high school coaches and a lot of colleges with the no middle philosophy, right. yep. which essentially when it gets to the left, that is man left. And so, you know, a lot of teams are already doing this and they don't even realize that they're doing it. Yeah. And so the, the, the first thing that we have done that is a little tweak of, you know, I studied lock left Tyler Cost. Costin's lock left and okay, yeah. uh you know I studied several other guys um that that were really doing this at a high level um colleges in Canada etc and so um you know the advantage that we have from some other guys is that we are actually running this and we are doing it so some of the tweaks that we have made number 1 we split the court into thirds Mm -hmm. And we defend just a a little bit differently on each third. 
And essentially, just in big picture terms, yeah. we deny everything to the right. We keep everything in front, in the middle. And once it gets to the left, we keep it over there. And so one of the things we used to do was try to get the ball to the left before it crossed half court. And as you know, um, and as maybe some of the listeners will find out, I mean, we play against the best high school players in the country here in Illinois. And so trying to get them in the full court to get it over to the left was almost an impossible task. And we attempted to do that really my first and second year to get the ball to the left before it even crossed half court. So we could just jam it over there and we weren't very successful. And when we weren't very successful at it, they would snake it back to the right. And then we would have no help whatsoever. And then we're playing a numbers game and they're four on three or three on two, whatever it is. So anyways, the major, major change we made from what other teams were doing was splitting the court into thirds in the half court. And then just allowing the ball to get to the left third on its own without getting beat on the dribble. And once it got to the left third to keep it over there. So obviously we have techniques and drills and, and things that we do once it gets to the left third, but now how we do it is, and again, this is just how we do it. You might find it more successful, you know, doing tweaking of your own. And so I don't ever tell anybody that this is the only way to do it. I just tell people this is the way we have done it. And, and you stress that a lot in the video too, which yes, I like to, yeah. I, I, I am very careful to say this is the only way things should be done because <laughs> everybody has different players. Everybody has a different system, not a different system, but at the end of the day, things are similar at the end. You know, if I'm playing your team coach, you get a possession, then I get a possession, you get a possession, I get a possession. So theoretically, we have an equal number of possessions. Well, we want to turn teams over and speed them up. So that's why we implement this man left. Um, And again, very simple. Uh, I think, what was the stat? 80%, 90% of players are are right-handed yes yeah. and and the one of the most common questions i get well what if you guard a lefty we keep it everything's the same yeah. in general now obviously you know when we play uh an elite elite player we mm-hmm. make adjustments to how we guard them regardless of what defense we're playing but in general um you know and we've played two really elite left-handers jalen brunson is the first one to come to mind and we played him in the state semifinals and his Stevenson team uh, in 2015, we played them at the final four when we played it just like we would a a righty. Um, And so, and then we played Adam Miller, who was a a McDonald's all American, went to LSU, Illinois, and then to LSU. He was a lefty uh, and we played him two or three times. So, um, you know, when we play elite players, it doesn't matter if we're running man left or not, those players are still going to be elite. <laughs> um, and so they'll, they'll get their points, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. They're going to get, they're going to do what they do regardless. And so, and I know our defense is effective because when I, when we scrimmage or when we play three possessions or five possessions and things we do in practice, and my, I tell my guys, well, we're going to run man left. And then our other guys go, oh, man, you can just see like, <laughs> oh, that is we, great. we're yeah. not going to be able to do anything. Like we're right. not going to be able to set any screens coming back to the right. We're not going to be able to – no pin downs will work, nothing. And so what the man left does, it just doesn't allow teams to do what they normally do. And, yeah, and it and I want really to talk frustrates about that a little teams. bit more in detail. Sorry, coach, to interrupt. Yeah, but no I problem. Think that's a good place to start too. Is uh, the thing that I loved about the man left, <laughs> and maybe this is my simple mind because I always like to break the game down in simple things. Because no tech, every it, every technique can be exploited, and and it yes. really comes down to the fundamentals. And that's what I love about this defense. You still have to play fundamentals. Yeah, you still have to slide, and you still have to do everything, mm-hmm. but. The beautiful thing is it's not just, you know, what's the purpose of defense and don't let me score. Okay. That's still too broad of a goal. Right. But then when you add, well, 
um, force everybody in one direction, which is left. And I still think, you know, you know, the no middle or, you know, force to the force to the, um, uh, you know, short corner. Uh, yep. You see some defenses do that, right? That still is a lot to think about. Here, sure. you know exactly what you're doing. You're forcing yes. left. No matter where the ball is on the court, we're trying to force left, period. Yes. Yes. We're trying to get it to one spot on the court. And that takes all of this decision-making and makes it yes. pretty simple. And yes. that's what I love about it. And and so, you know, I, I think this the greatness is in its simplicity, but people overthink the techniques to get there if that Correct. makes sense Absolutely. we are not it's we are not big on yes right yep. we are not big on technique in our program and it drives some coaches crazy and sometimes it drives my assistants crazy but you know we we don't say okay you got to have two hands and then a match hand down on closeouts and all of those things we just i just don't want our kids thinking that much and that drives yeah. some coaches crazy too. What do you mean you don't want to think and you, they can just do whatever. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I want them comfortable in the simplicity of it so that they can, or we can get the results we want. And so, you know, really quick on the left-hand third, when we're closing out on the left third, we don't allow two things to happen. Mm -hmm. We don't allow any right-handed drives. And we don't allow step in threes or spot up threes. And a closeout is only successful in the left hand third if it ends with the player putting it on the floor to their left. Which is a and hard concept to get right. Yes. To, yeah. To it it is person. very hard for our kids because yep. they've been taught That's right. a couple things since they've been playing biddy ball. The first one is turn them, turn them, turn them, turn them, turn them as many times as possible. And when they start decking it to the left, you don't want to turn them. Yeah, You want them to keep going. And so, um, you know, we add a little, th some things in our help with fake and fades and stunts and those types of things to get guys to pick up their dribble. But so what we call it is taking away two and fighting for the third. So we take away the shot, mm -hmm. we take away the right-hand dribble, and we fight for the left-hand dribble. In other words, mm -hmm. when he starts dribbling, we fight for the ability not to cut them off because if you cut them off and they turn it to the right, then we're right. done. We have no help. And that's the biggest concept that our guys had to adjust to is not turning guys and not necessarily getting in front and stopping guys. We will take a contested left. And again, this is just us. Yeah. We yeah. will take a contested left-handed layup every time. Uh, That's fine with us. A contested left-handed layup not one where he's got us on his rear end but one where we are right next to him and we're walled up and we're contesting and so, so okay so you're you're not trying to get um turn them in the short corner or not turn is not the right word but i mean you're yeah trying to I, stop them in yes the we are we kind of are trying to force them there but we we will take you're okay with the left yes hand. that's that uh, yes yeah. as long as it's contested and right. we don't foul yeah. Um. I, at case in point, we were playing at a school last year, and it was twenty-seven to twenty-six at the end of the first quarter. I can't even remember if we were up or they were up. And one of the times, the ref ran by me and he said, "Coach, I can see what you're doing." And so we had given up a couple left-handed layups where guys got all the way in front of us because our angles weren't very good. Mm -hmm. We didn't stunt very well. We didn't fake and fade, uh, and we had no help at all on that side. And so. But my point is the ref said, I can see what you're doing and we just get it off the net and go. We don't. Yeah. So, and we ended up winning like 82 to 59 or something like that because the pace at which we play. And then obviously we made a, a few adjustments just like you would do against any team. Yeah. And, and, and then we were fine. So, um, you know, that's, that's just an example, but the, it starts with the closeout on the left third and that's taking away two, and then fighting for the third. Yeah. So, um, you know, those those are key teaching points on our closeouts on the left third. So when we close out, we close out different in the middle third, excuse me, and the right third than we do on the left third. And in the right, on the right side of the floor, we just keep people in front or keep guys in front. Mm -hmm. In the middle third, we keep in front 
kind of encouraging them to drive it to the left. Uh, but usually most teams will just pass it to the left because we're denying to the right anyways. And then they just throw it over there on their own. And once it gets over there, then we really load up. Yeah. And we, we call it loading up. We load up uh, on the helpline or whatever you want to call the midline. Um, and it's a beautiful thing when you see it happen. Yes. Too. Uh, it yes. really is. So a couple of things uh, come to mind. Uh, what, what, Oh, well, I'm going to ask it this way. Let's let's start now. Yeah. You, there's no other defense that exists besides the lock left defense. Yeah, you're teaching it on the third grade level. Yeah, okay. give me three, maybe three things that if you were going to teach at the third grade level that you would do differently. Now you know with well, the lock left. I, I would different. I would tell the third grade if I was legitimately coaching third grade, I would tell them to force it to the left all the time, no matter what third they were on, if okay. I was coaching third grade. So I would adjust just a little bit. Yeah. As the skill level increases, you kind of have to make the adjustments to almost what we do now. Um, yeah. As the skill level decreases, you can force it all to the left. Uh, my A couple of my assistants who are now head coaches, we used to say, let's just get... Let's just go and get a, a lower middle school girls team and run man left. And no one will know what to do. No one will know how to do it. Now, that's not to say that the coaches wouldn't necessarily know what to do, but this would work against the sixth grade boys as well, because the skill level is not very good. Right. right uh, and right. they're not quite ready for it, if that makes sense. So yeah, if, if I was if I was like our third grade feeder, I would yeah. just tell them and I might just layer it at third grade. Hey, just force them to the left. When you pick up the ball, force them to the left. And so that would be layer one, I would say. Yeah. And then layer two would be don't allow the ball back to the right might be another simple thing for a third grade to do. Deny it to the right. If, mm -hmm. if you can. And so if they happen to catch it on the right, you might tell them they cannot advance it or drive it to the right. Just make the closeouts the same everywhere. And, but, you know, I don't really care at the third grade level if they win any games. In fact, I don't <laughs> right. care if my, yeah. I don't care if my freshman team wins any games, to be honest with you. Yeah. I want a certain things learned and I want thir certain things being mastered. And so, if, you know, a third grade at the third grade level, I would make everybody go to the left hand. And, you know, it would be developmentally good for everybody because it would force the kids that can't dribble with their left hand to practice dribbling with their left hand. So I, I know I said, I'm not thinking about winning, but forcing left would help us win for sure. But developmentally, it would make those kids have to do something that maybe they're not as good at and practice something that they're not as good at. Right. If that yeah. makes sense. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, I, like I sometimes I tell our freshman coaches, hey, just force them over to the left hand side of the floor. And that's good enough for the first week. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, they're working on fundamentals and skills and all of that stuff. So defensively, like that's a layer for them is just getting it over there, make it get over there somehow. And so um, that's a lot easier to do the lower the level is, if that makes right. sense. And yeah, it's, it's almost true. contrary yeah. to what you're thinking, yeah. but it, you can, you can do that easier the lower the levels and you play it bigger in the get. gaps on the yes. left side exactly yes. yeah so yes. one of the things you brought up though is you know we we fall you know closeouts there's all you know there's i mean at the end of the day closeouts or closeouts they're similar yes you know, choppy step no or question. running out and everything yep. else but what so one your thing is that's a little different on the left hand side the second thing that is different now we used to run a lot of pack line defense we had mm -hmm. the the um uh, you know, we were in the gap playing in the gap, but yep. as soon as that ball hit the ground, right, we went to go double the ball or at least stop it 
in order yeah. for my player to catch up and then right yeah. um so this whole concept of fake and fade which i absolutely love that's a hard yeah. concept to that is hard teach because we've been so ingrained with help defense stop the ball yeah. and i'm guilty of it too as a coach saying you stop yes. the ball yeah it's the most important thing right right and uh, so the the fake and fade kind of evolved for us mm -hmm. because when we first started doing it, this was one of the tweaks that we did. When yeah. we first started doing it, we affect in in a sense, we played pack line to the left. Yep. And we denied everything to the right. So you're playing pack line. And so a guy's driving to your left, right at you, and then you take it, and then he kicks it to the corner, and then you have a relatively long closeout, 10 to 12 foot close out there. And we got beat several times in several games by they would stick their best shooter in the corner and they would drive it right at our help and kick it and bam yeah. there we would and so at the younger levels you don't have to worry about that so much but when you're playing at the highest level of high school boys in illinois well really anywhere there's going to be guys that can knock that shot down so that was the you know evolution of the the fake and fade concept for us I'm not saying I invented it because I certainly didn't sure. uh, the yeah, stunt yeah. and all of that stuff, right. but we used to just simply play pack line and then close out. And then guys yeah. would just bang threes in our face and it just didn't work. And so that's where we evolved as a defense with the fake and fade, because it's exactly that it's a fake in hopes of getting him to just pick it up but we're staying with our guy now, mm -hmm. if that makes sense and not yeah. allowing corner threes or the penetrate kick three uh, on the left-hand side. So that concept is big for us. And that's hard for our guys too, because they've been taught since third grade as well, that the ball is the most important thing, which it still is, but the result of what we want that guy to keep doing is pick it up. And then you go back to your guy, but make it a short closeout because of the fate. That's why he's picking it up. And so, now, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, will you make in-game adjustments, though, if that sure. shooter or if that yes. person on the wing is yes. just not a and shooter? Yes, and so if the person is not a shooter, which we run into that, too, yeah. and we'll run into some teams, which I'm not going to gonna name, but just sure. in general, yeah. um, that can't shoot it. And then we can help a lot more and play typical pack line etc um and and do those things and a lot of it is dependent on who we play the personnel they have and yeah. so these small little tweaks that i'm talking about happen in every game so that's why coaches ask me well can you send me some film of your games and sure i send it to them and then they're like well that that this possession didn't look like uh, man well right. it's not exactly the man left that's on the video because we adjust it to opponents sometimes it's in general the entire team sometimes it's individuals just like you would any other defense yep um depending on who you played so um it it's it, it can evolve into whatever you want it to be and certainly when we get ahead in games we might not play man left at all. We might just play pack line and keep guys in front because we don't need to speed anybody up anymore because if they don't score, we're already up 12. Yeah. And so we don't, we don't need it anymore. And so, you know, when we don't need to speed teams up, a lot of times we'll just play traditional pack line and switch everything and just keep guys in front. That's what we tell our guys. So, um, you know, there's there's a significant portion of games a lot of the time where we're not in man left and you can't just record our games and think right, you're going to see, see pure, saying. pure man left all yeah. of the time because that's not that's not what we that's not what we do. So, um, you know, I, I think there's no pure way to do it. You have to make the little adjustments kind of on the fly. Um, it's easier for us now because it's a kind of our base defense. Mm. And so we can tweak it little bits at a time. But I mean, you know, when we have our first game next Tuesday, we'll start in man left for sure. And if I feel like the team's trying to go up and down, that's I might just go, you know, pack line, switch everything and because we don't need it. And yeah. so they most teams 
try not to run with us. But if they try to, we might not even use pack line and we might be man and just switch everything. And I'll just tell them, keep in front. That's all. So and going so, back to what you originally said, it, it brings up a question of the, you know, you did the four or you did the, the man left uh, yep. to help on the offensive side. So yeah. are you, when you, and you've said it several times, you're, you want to speed teams up. Mm-hmm. You want to speed them up so they get a quick basket. So you get another possession really quickly and you score. Well, I don't know if we want them to get a basket per se, we want them to shoot the ball. You want them, sorry, that's what, yeah, yes, shoot the ball. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, if we get a, if they get a basket, so be it. We right. get it out of the net, and then, then we immediately, you know, we try to get four to six layups off of other teams' made baskets, um, because you, you know how it works. As soon as the team makes a layup. Everybody relaxes. Yep. They turn around. They jog the first two or three steps. Ball. By that time, we're gone. And we want to get a layup on the other end. So, um, but teams that play us on a regular basis know this and they sprint back or they get all five back. So it's, it's getting more difficult to get those things uh, against teams that we play a lot. So we did that. There was a proud coach's moment over the weekend. He was telling me we had that scrimmage and Mm -hmm. we had a force left um, and we were in transition. The ball never touched the ground and scored a layup. It was, yes. I mean, it was such a beautiful, it was two passes, no, three, one, two, uh, one, yeah, one, uh, two or three passes, whatever it was. Sure. It was just yeah. beautiful. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And love those it. are, those are the things that uh, make you feel good as a coach. And then, like I tell our guys, then we see it, then we want to see it again. Right. We want to, we yeah. want to do more of That's that. Right. And so, you know, obviously it's not realistic to get that every time, but um, you know, one of the most popular questions I get about this, about playing fast is, well, what happens in the playoffs when the game slows down and it's just a grind out game? Well, if it's a grind out game and we happen to get two or three easy layups, then that's a, those are backbreakers in games yeah. like that. So we try to play fast regardless of that. Mm-hmm. So Anyways, that's that's a little more offense than, than yeah, it is yeah, defense, yeah. but all of this kind of really fits together for us. Um, and so it helps us, you know, offensively and defensively for sure. So in the so the one thing comes to mind too, I get a lot of questions about is, you know, on defense is man versus zone, especially at the youth level, right? I'm a big yeah. proponent of all man, man principles up until I'm with you. I'm fifth, with sixth you. grade. You can start to some zone and implement zone. Yep. Um, like you said, uh, you know, I don't care if we win. I just want the fundamentals to be strong. But other sure. you know, people, other coaches don't necessarily agree with right. me, right? Yes. <laughs> or yes. us. Uh, it's so funny, though. It's like there's so many coaches that truly do believe in that. But yet you see these leagues where zone is allowed. And yes. and even the press I just, at that level, just exactly. let them play. Let them they can barely get it up on their own if nobody's right. in front yes. of them. Yes. And in fact, I, I might go so far as I don't know if I would let somebody run man left in the third and fourth grade league because they, they won't be able to do anything against that well that um, was where my question was going right yeah, because so, is that the same as a zone i mean it, yeah right? you could make that argument for sure yeah. you know if if i'm running a youth league or youth tournament i would probably make teams play man until just like regular man and i know you can't like dictate exactly what the other team does and all of that yeah. stuff but um and, and i i understand the argument well they need to learn how to break the press well There's just certain things that physically you can't do and developmentally very well until you get to fifth, sixth, seventh grade. And then, you know, if you can't do them, then it's on the skill set and then the acumen of the coaches. I get all of that piece. But I think at at the beginning, you know, it's it's very important to develop the fundamentals. and, And we tell our guys all the time it's about habits and decision making habits and decision making, not only within the basketball realm, but within your life. And now I know that's, we're not going to get into that piece, but um, you know, so if kids can develop good habits and then they can be good decision makers on the floor and that goes both directions, obviously. Mm -hmm. And if a kid figures out like, Hey, I bet I can force this kid to his left and he's not going to be able to, or she's not going to be able to do it. Then 
go go for it. So, um, you know, I think there's a balance to that whole thing, but I am with you on, I am a huge proponent of no zone until roughly, I don't know, you could debate it, but at, at least, you know, fifth, sixth grade, something like that. And yeah. the, the pressing thing too, like, really? Like that's right. so, but, and, and I, you know, my son is a freshman now, so I'm a little out of the youth game, but when he was playing, I just would watch like coaches just, and I would, yeah, I, know. I would tweet about it almost every time. Like, really, you're going to press. And it wasn't hardly ever the games that my son was in. It was uh, just watching the court next or, you know, whatever. Totally. So, um, so I, I think there's, there's something to be said for all of that stuff and running man left, maybe at the really younger ages is probably not what you should be pushing, pushing it a little bit. Yes, I mean, yes, yes. Fish. Pushing it a little bit is definitely, <laughs> definitely a good wording. Uh, so yeah, so a couple, couple detailed questions. One of the, yep. one of the things that we ran into, and I know coaches will question this because it's something we've been taught how to do again since early ages, um, is the screening uh, or covering the screen. So high ball yep. screen, mm -hmm. you're hedging really hard. Yes. Right. And I know yes. you addressed this in the video, but even my yeah. own coach questioned me. I'm like, are you sure we want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, because they're afraid of the person who's coming up to screen mm -hmm. is just going to slip, slip and they're going to yep. be wide open. Right. I, I think I, I think that. Whatever it is you commit to, it's not what you do, it's how you do it, if that makes sense. Sure. And so, you know, I, I I'm a big proponent that what we do is really, really important, but how we do it is more important. And so, you know, I'm, I'm a head coach, obviously, and a lot of things fall under my umbrella, but my, my two biggest responsibilities are number one, that our kids go hard. And mm -hmm. that's, that's my number one thing. And then number two is that all of our players get coached. That doesn't mean that I coach all of the players. <laughs> right. That means that all of the players get coached. And now I'm talking on our varsity court all the way down to our freshman level, that all of our players are being coached. Mm -hmm. And so those are my two responsibilities. And so getting back to your high hedge thing, no matter what you do, there's always going to be a, what if they do this? Correct. What if they do yep. this? Cause whoever yep. has the, the, you know, the dry erase marker last, that's going to be the winner. <laughs> uh, so of course yeah. they could slip it. Of course they could do that, but then we can do some things too and get some guys to the helpline, you know, trap the, trap the uh, ball handler, you know, just things like that. And if the, if the closeout works in the first place and the guy's dribbling it to the left, there is no screen. There's no high hedge even needed. Right. And so, right. so that's my response to that. And then they could say, well, that's not realistic because it's going to happen. Well, of course it's going to happen in a game because everything is going to happen in a game. And so we just want what we want to have happen to happen more than what you want to have happen, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, no, so I like that. That's how we try to get oh, and if we give up a slip and our help doesn't get there on time, or if a kid closes out and he they still allow the high hedge to happen instead of the kid decking it, of course it's gonna happen. We don't really, you know, go crazy over that because something happened. We want something to happen. And so something did happen. It's not exactly what we wanted to happen, but we are not gambling, but we are kind of saying we think what we want to have happen is going to happen more than what you want that's to have happen. Yeah, that's a lot of good confidence right there. We have all uh, we have a bunch of our girls saying fix it. I love it. Yes. Oh, that's that's, thing, so. that's a concept yeah. that I, I I get asked, oh, well, what are the rotations? Out of, we don't have any rotations, which I absolutely we, love. We we don't yeah. have any rotations at all. Taking I don't all say those decisions away. Yes, then, right. Just yeah. fix it as fast as possible, and then it's fine. And so yeah. I used to get really, especially when I was a young coach, like, oh, the rotation was bad. Yeah. The help is bad. No, yeah. no, no. It, 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 and now I 
I think it helps when you've won a bunch of games and I'm a lot more calm now, you know, and somebody with, you know, my last clinic that I, that I did was a zoom for like 600 coaches. And they said, well, it's easy when you've won 400 games. Well, and nothing's really easy, no matter what you do, but I am a little bit more relaxed. I guess you would say if our kids make mistakes, because I understand that mistakes are going to happen and if they were perfect, then, you know, we're, right. they wouldn't need me. That's right. And so, yeah. um, and if I was perfect, I wouldn't need them. Yes. So <laughs> um, we're, we're banking on the fact that what we think is going to happen is going to happen more than yeah. what you think is going to happen. So that's how I would answer the high hedge question. And of course we give techniques that we want our yeah. kids to use, but we more, want the results that we want. Yeah. Um, and so when we play short-sighted games, we just score what we want to see. And that's another huge concept for us that I think a lot of teams yeah. should do. And just whatever you want them, whatever you want to see out there, score that. Like today right. at practice on offense, uh, a drive pass pass was worth five points today. Yeah whether we scored on it or not, yeah, because that's right. what I thought offensively we weren't doing very well is we would drive it and then we would yeah. drive it again and we would drive it again and we would just drive, followed by drive, followed by drive. And so a drive pass pass was worth five. Yeah. So then when they did that, guess what I saw today? I saw a bunch of drive pass passes because my yeah. kids want to win and that's what they do. And so scoring what you want to see is a huge concept for us on both sides of the basketball. I just gave you an offensive example, but a defensive example running the man left would be a right-handed layup is worth 10 points. A left-handed layup is worth one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Yeah. Your kids will not give up if a right-handed <laughs> layup is worth 10. They won't give up a right-handed layup. Yeah. Nobody will get a right-handed layup because your kids want to win. And if they don't want to win, then I don't. You got know. other issues. <laughs> yeah, you got other problems. Yeah. So, um, so you know, like today, a defensive example. We did this today. If the ball gets reversed from the left side to the right, it's five points for mm -hmm. the offense. Well, guess what? The defense wasn't giving up. Yeah. Reversals to the right, because you know sometimes we get lazy, like any other yeah. team, after the second or third pass, and then we just allow the reversal because we get a little lazy. And we're not going to finish the possession. So that was an emphasis today in some of our short-sighted games. So I just gave you two examples there of score what you want to see. Whatever you want them to do, whatever you want them to work on, make that worth the points. Yeah. And then they will figure out the technique or what they need to do to make that happen or stop that from happening. And the, so the one thing I always say about that too, which I, and you know, last year was a different COVID year and all of that, and mm -hmm. there was a little bit more you know, anyway, missing a lot of kids and just a different year. And this yeah. year, I just like, you know what, I need to relax a little bit more and have this. I don't know where I heard this, and I'm sure I heard it from some podcast or something, but it was um, get them 70% of the way there and let the magic happen. Yes. And I just love that because it's just like, okay, I we, we cannot coach every scenario. Yes. And I always, and what I always say is, you know, they'll, they come up with their, well, what if this, what if this, what if this, I'm like on the defensive side, now we're talking, I'm like, yes. well, where do we want the ball? Yes. The left hand. And I, I let them answer their own question, yes. right? Yes. Well, okay. Where do they say, coach, we want it to left. I'm like, get it there then. Yes. I don't care how you, I actually don't care how you yes. get it there. Just get it there. And I keep it there. Agree. Yes. So. And so that's a, uh... You know, the last clinic I did was on, about how we do our offense, but it, the same concept is true. Like, you know, we, whatever shots you want them to take, then score that. Yeah. And so if you want the ball on the left, then shots on the left, make them less than shots on the right. And then nobody will take, nobody will get shots on the right because your kids will figure out how to get it to the left. Yeah. And so we're not super big on technique either. I've mentioned that several times and it. It's just a moniker of control that I've let go. Um, and so I, I don't think it matters exactly how you close out. If you match two hands or match hand or one hand, just tell them what you want the result to be. And for our team, That's we want point. no threes. We want no right handed drives and we want them to deck it to the left. That's it. 
And so how you do that is up to you. Yeah. And so um, you can do it however you want. I know some coaches teach don't cross your feet when you're sliding on defense. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. Just get the ball where we need to get the ball. And yeah. so, um, you know, a lot of coaches, you know, I, I know they might not roll their eyes right to my face, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying? They're like, well, if you, if you're not teaching technique, I don't know. So at any rate, um, you know, that's again, just how we do it and how our philosophy is. Yeah. I am totally with it. And maybe that's why I enjoy that. And just hearing the way you were talking about the, the man left defense, uh, because I, you know, at the end of, the, I mean, I got too as a young younger coach too. I was got too worried about yes. the closeouts and this and that. And then, you know, the 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 kids come to me from you know multiple different programs. Sure, right. Yep. I mean, there's no coach in the world that says, "Oh no, don't close out." Right. Let them shoot a three. <laughs> yes. You know yes. what I mean? It's right. Like, okay, they're teaching a, a closeout of some sort. Yes. Right? Or they're yes. teaching some sort of defense and, you know, of, you know, sliding and not sliding or whatever sure. hip turn. And I'm like, okay, right. Just yes. don't let them score easily. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly right. That's yes. exactly right. Uh, and I like that, you know, we get a little technique maybe on, um, you know, we run the read and react on the offensive yep. side. So yep. there's, you know, reads, right. Sure. So, absolutely. I like the re idea of the read, you know, absolutely. Versus yep. like, yep. okay. Like a very robotic no um, question you know because then somebody forgets it's like and then yes. the whole thing just shuts down no question and so you know our philosophy on the defensive end is theoretically the opposite of what we want on the offensive end so the defensive end we want teams to take contested mid-range shots or contested shots on the left hand side even if it's a layup and shots outside of the lane and converse that offensively we want shots in the lane we want to get fouled and take free throws we want step in threes um and and then you know fourthly we want mid-range and so you know what our philosophies what we want and don't want mirror each other if that makes sense yep. but is yeah. exactly the opposite of you understand what i'm saying yeah. so um you know that just makes it all mesh together for us so that we can be consistent with what we want to do. I, I think yeah, I was always amazed by teams that would run pack line and let teams reverse it five, six, seven, eight times, but then they would want to run. Let's fast break on the offensive end. Well, those two things don't really go together. Um, and again, I'm not telling people what they should do. I'm just telling you how we want our stuff to mesh together. Right. And the yeah, man yeah, left yeah, meshes yeah. with what we do on offense um really really well yeah no that totally makes sense coach yeah no it's uh and again let uh to kind of uh wrap this up and end with this uh the man left again if we're talking to youth coaches uh okay. it, the maybe three two to three drills that they uh or techniques that they should re kind of re-engineer or rethink about if they are interested in a lock left Yep. So I would definitely split the court into thirds. Mm -hmm. um, and e if I was at a, a lower level, maybe even in half and just do things just a little bit different on the left half than you do on the right half. Or if you're comfortable with it, a third, a third, a third. Yeah. And so, um, you know, what you do on the right third and the middle third are essentially the same. And then so. I would do the closeouts on the left side different than the closeouts anywhere else. So mm -hmm. the closeouts yeah. in the middle and right third, I would just tell your kids no threes, no right-handed dribbles. That's it. And then the, the same thing on, on the left third. So really they're the same, um, but you just close out with your left foot much higher on the left third so that your left foot is higher than any foot that they have interesting make, yeah. make yeah. them deck it going to the left so the closeouts would be the, the number one thing when you're just tossing and running to a closeout practicing that differently depending on where you are on the floor so every closeout is not the same right that would be the first one so our feet are squared up in the 
on the right side and middle third, and then they're not square at all with the left third. And then I would, as your kids get older, I would make sure that the angle in which they are forcing, we have to, you know, check our guys on this sometimes. Sometimes our guys force to the basket, and that's not what we want. Obviously, if you're quicker than your guy, then you can do kind of whatever you want. But you have to be the judge of where exactly you want to force your player. Mm -hmm. And so uh, coaches need to be, you know, cognizant of that too. So the closeouts would be number one. Then I would work on containing ball handlers as they're coming downhill. And then, this is not just for youth, but that this is for our guys. Too. <laughs> That's what we're this working is, on today. Yes. Coach. Yes. That, that, practice. So, uh, yeah. You know, uh, and I say this because a lot of teams get five back on us and just wait for us. Well, if you wait for my point guard to get downhill on you and he's already getting downhill on you and you're waiting for him at the pack line, you got no chance, yeah. no chance at all. So teams that would get five back and wait on us, we, you, you're dead yeah. um, because we're going to get going and then you got no chance. So I would say containing ball handlers and then the concept of the fake and fade or the mm, stunt, yeah. depending on yeah. what you call want to call it. Um, and then you can do it however you want. You can stunt and go to the ball handler. You can stunt and go to your player. And so that just gives you so much more flexibility as a coach if you know you do those closeouts in the man left you can contain the ball handler so that they get it to the left and then you know at the end you can fake and fade and provide the ball handler with a little confusion and that's all we want to do just a little right, confusion a little it's not like they got to be you know totally whacked on what they're doing it just provides a little confusion from what they're used to so those three concepts i would say so the close be, up containing ball handlers going downhill and then the fake and fade. Yes. And yeah. that, you know, especially the containing ball handlers going, that's really hard. I yeah, mean, it's cool. hard at the yeah. highest level. Yeah. It's hard at youth levels. Um, and so, you know, one other concept I would throw in there that our guys, not so much now, but when we first started implementing this, they would, a guy was dribbling to their left and they would turn them because they're so used to turning uh, them. Right. Just keep yeah. them going. We want a full speed dribble to the left where you're going right next to them. Yeah. That's fine. So you're shoulder to shoulder running. Yes. Them, you're saying. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We want that. Yeah. And so, you know, those concepts are hard to break, I guess, yeah. um, and enforce um, because our kids have been taught, turn them, turn them, turn them, right. turn them, turn them, zigzag, 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 zigzag. No, we, we don't want that. We want a full speed dribble to the left. And, all of this is, again, I'm not in this to sell videos. I'm going to give you my email uh, before we get off here. And sure. anybody can email me, whatever. Um, but this is all described in the in the video. Um, and, and it's pretty clear and concise, I think. Yeah, it is. Um, no, I, no, you did a good job. The people the video, at Breakthrough Basketball did a great job of editing and doing yeah. all of that stuff. But I will be happy to, you know, talk through, you know, email back and forth, whatever, with any of your listeners or anybody, you'd be shocked how many emails I get every day um, and text That's messages awesome. and, and all of those things. Um, the more I do this, the more, and everything that I've done, I've stolen from somebody else and maybe <laughs> tweaked it a little bit. And so That's right. I, I am happy to give it to whoever wants it yeah. so that they can do whatever they want with it and tweak it and use it to their advantage. And so, you know, I'm not the smartest guy. I stole all this and just made little adjustments here all. And if somebody wants to take my video and make another man left thing and call it something, dude, I don't care. I'll call I it woman left. Since yes, I I'll, I'll, yeah, exactly that. Exactly <laughs> that. So, um, so why don't you tell us uh, your email? I know because that's yep. how I got a hold of you. You were yep. very generous with that. And, you know, you got back to me right away. And I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. And sometimes it takes me a little longer during the season, but it's OK. I will always return every single email, every single text, every single call. So um, I'm going to spell this out. Um, my email is B as in boy, R-O-S-T 
R for Rob, C as in Charles. So B R O S T R C at V V S D Victor Victor S D dot org stands Perfect. for Valley View School District dot org. So B R O S T R C at V V S D dot org. That's my uh, school email. And um, like I said, Sometimes it takes me 24, 48 hours to get back to everybody, but I will get back to everyone. Um, and if you drop me an email, I'll get you my cell number. And if you want to talk, it's no big deal. I'm, I'm pretty much an open book. Um, you know, uh, coach, this was great. I appreciate you having me on. I think what you're doing for basketball is, is unbelievable and that you're a great resource to, to everybody. And I, I just hope to be the same. Yeah, I uh, appreciate that, Coach. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And just hold on and we'll do a quick wrap up. All right. Uh, I hope you uh, listeners, you got uh, coaches out there, you got a lot out of this. This was a great discussion. One of our longer podcasts, too. Uh, you know, hope you bared with us all the way through the end because there was a lot of good nuggets in here. Uh, head on over to uh, Breakthrough Basketball to um, and I'll put it in the show notes to the video. It was extremely helpful for me to to learn um, the, the man left defense. So appreciate you coach. Um, we'll talk soon. Um, thank you.